Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Vespers. It's really good to be together tonight on this penultimate Vespers of the church year. We have gathered every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. on Zoom with rotating leadership. You will remain muted throughout the service tonight, and you're welcome to either keep your camera on or turn it off, whatever is, um, is more comfortable for you tonight. If we encounter any technical issues, or if you can't hear or see something that you think you're supposed to, send us a message in the chat box. We all know that doing live anything comes with its own technology hazards, so if we make mistakes, or me or someone else on the call loses connection or freezes, we hope that you will take that too as part of the spiritual practice tonight, as part of a spiritual practice of honoring the things that we cannot control. Here, during this time that we share tonight, we invite you to be present, to set aside the shoulds and to do's and whatever else may keep you from this opportunity to just be. You're invited to take a minute to get comfortable, however that is for you, whether it's changing your position in the room, the lighting, your Zoom settings, and so on. Of the five traditional monastic prayers, Vespers is the evening prayer shared at sunset. It is a time for us to change the pace of the day as we settle into the evening and relax. A time for reflecting with gratitude on the day and unwinding into a more contemplative mindset. So let's begin our time together with our centering song. This is the Azerbaijani folk song called Lachin by the musical group Anna RF. While the centering song plays, if you don't have a pen and paper nearby, now is a good time to um, collect some for our contemplative practice.
our chalice this evening with words by Euro-American UU Minister Reverend Patrick O'Neill. The things that are holy and sacred in this life are neither stored away on mountaintops nor locked away in arcane secrets of the saints. I doubt that any church has a monopoly on them either. What holiness there is in this world resides in the ordinary bonds between us and in whatever bonds we manage to create between ourselves and the divine. It is now the time in our Vesper service to acknowledge the joys and sorrows that we all bring to contemplative worship tonight. I will light our first candle as a candle of joy. May we make time and space for infusions of joy into our daily lives, remembering that now more than ever, joy is a spiritual practice, allowing us to continue doing the work that is ours to do. I light a second candle for the sorrows that we carry with us today. May we have the courage to reach out to others to hold them in their sorrows and to reach out to others to have a safe place to lay down our own. And I light one final candle for the world. That there might be justice and healing, transformation and abundant love. Let us take a quiet moment with the ringing of the singing bowl to reflect on the joys and sorrows that we carry in our hearts today. Amen. Our reading tonight comes from an adult UUA tapestry program called Spirit in Practice. It is called The Wandering Teacher, which we read tonight as we look ahead to the summer months and practice discernment as our spiritual practice, settling into a prayerful space to meditate on what contemplative practices that we might take from this year of Vespers into the summer before we reconvene in the fall. So the reading. Once upon a time, there was a teacher who was known far and wide as one who had mastered all the great disciplines of a spiritual seeker. She wandered the country and whenever people heard that she was near, they traveled to seek her wisdom and her guidance. Great teacher, one would say, I wish to get closer to God. By what path do you travel now? She would ask. I study the scriptures, diligently applying myself day and night to unlocking their mysteries, might come the reply. Then you should put down your books and walk in the woods, thinking nothing but listening deeply. Another would say, I do good to every person I meet, doing all that I can to serve their needs. Then, for a time, the teacher would reply, consider yourself well met and strive to serve your own needs as you have so well served others. One day, the teacher noticed someone in the back of the crowd, someone not pushing his way to her as most of the others did. So she went to him. What is it that I can do for you, she asked. I do not know, he replied. I feel in need of something, 
but I do not believe in God and have nothing you could call a practice. When do you feel most alive? The teachers asked. When I am playing with my children, the man said without hesitation. Then play with your children, said the teacher, and you will find what you seek. Here ends our reading. And for our contemplative practice tonight, we're going to do something a little different. Um, we're going to engage in the spiritual practice of discernment. The power of prayer and discernment are things I've learned a lot about from my Christian colleagues. One of the great benefits of having time for prayer every day is that it is a time set apart to offer up questions and concerns traditionally to God, um, but it doesn't have to be. It's not a practice that's quite as common with us as you use. And so I don't have a regular practice of sitting with questions, of letting trusted companions or spirit or just time help me see with more clarity, understand my needs, slow down, and just engage with things as they are. You might be similar, or you might have a better practice than I do. But today, tonight, we'll practice discernment together. I invite you to take a few deep breaths as we enter into kind of a contemplative space. As for a topic or question to engage during our time of discernment and prayer, as we near the end of our Vespers um, series for this church year, let's think about some contemplative practices that we might carry with us into the summer. But we've practiced so many and there's been some we haven't explored. So it might take some time to figure out what is right for us. Maybe there's also a question that's been heavy on your heart this week or some unresolved feeling that you're sitting with that you would like to focus on instead because it's been on your heart and it's kind of a distraction. And if, if you have that, if that applies to you, you're invited to practice discernment on that question tonight. I'll in a minute actually invite you to just lower the volume on the Zoom meeting as we collectively tackle a different question and I guide us through that question. So what you might do for five or so minutes um, while we do that is write down your question or sit with it in quiet meditation and you might ask yourself some of these questions. You don't have to remember them. I'll put them in the chat box. Questions like, why might I be feeling unclarity around this issue lately? What parts of what I think of as my identity are at play or maybe even are in conflict? What people, what characters are involved? Do I have to have an answer to this question today or this week? What are all of the possibilities and outcomes, especially the ones I haven't considered yet? Is there room for even more grace and understanding here? And what would you, universe, spirit, or God, add here? What else is going on that I'm missing? So let me post those in the chat box. Oh, Phil and Carolyn, are you still having a tough time hearing? Can other folks on the call hear? And Carolyn, you still can't hear? No, you can. Okay. Good. So if you have your own question that you want to apply these series of questions to, you're actually invited to lower the volume on the Zoom meeting and just take some time and sit with, with your question. Um, take about five, six, seven minutes, and that's when we'll all gather back together for some music and a closing. And maybe you want to put on some light music in the background. Maybe you really just want to sit in, in silence. 
when you do them. And so for the rest of us, using your pen and paper, I invite you to draw um, eight empty circles, something like this. Don't worry about the labels yet, just you can draw those eight circles. It doesn't have to look just like this, but that's sort of what we're going for. I'll kind of keep going through the instructions um, and I'll repeat them so that if you are still one behind me, we can all catch up. But after that, you're going to label each circle the following eight labels that I'm going to put in the chat box. Oh, that link doesn't work. So those eight circles will be labeled personal spiritual practices, communal worship practices, spiritual partnerships, mind practices, body practices, soul practices, life practices, justice practices. And while you're doing that, I'll explain a little bit of those eight fields. These represent eight different spheres of spiritual, spiritual growth. The link at the very end of the list explains more about each one, but you can probably look at each one and kind of wager a guess as to what each refers to. Um, but if there's one that you're like, I don't know where, what that could mean, you can open the link and look at some examples. So as you've drawn up the eight circles and labeled them, let's take a moment to add a star by the three or so circles that you know feed your soul the most. For me, it would be probably, if I had to choose, spiritual partnerships or friendships, body practices, and personal spiritual practices. So think about your top three circles. It's okay if you have two or four. So for now, we're going to focus just on those three. And we'll take some time to journal and discern. Um, you might divide the circles into three parts. So within one circle, what you might start journaling about is a section for the practices that I do now under that category. A section for what I've done in the past that's nourishing to me in that category. And then something I've always wanted to try. So for body practices, I might write that I in one third that I now practice running and the other that I used to practice canoeing, not as much anymore, but I loved it. And I've always wanted to try starting off every single morning with a walk around the neighborhood. I'll put some of that in the chat as well. If you're still drawing or still putting stars on your favorite three. And so in the next couple of minutes, Rebecca is going to play some music. Um, and we're just going to take a few minutes in discernment, filling in some of these circles on your map um, with some of the things in the chat box. If you have finished before the music ends, you can move on to more, or you can just really focus on one circle. Take your time. That's what prayer and discernment time is all about. So Rebecca, I think we'll start some music.
take the next couple seconds to finish up listening to the hand drums. So you might have about half of your sheet filled out by now, maybe a little more, a little less, and that's okay. Discernment time is all about giving and allowing more and more time and not rushing to completion. That's the whole point. Um, we hope that this practice tonight can be an ongoing one. I encourage you to keep this sheet. Um, you might continue filling out the circles tonight. You might just keep this on a desk or a nightstand. You might see in a week, what comes up for you as a, a practice maybe from a long time ago or one you've always longed to try that you've forgotten about. Um, and just notice, do any one of these practices keep calling out to you? Did you start thinking about personal spiritual practices were most important to you, but as the week went on, realized that justice practices actually fill you up the most? And if after a week or two, one practice keeps calling to you um, over and over, you might use our 5.30 to 6 time block on Thursday evenings over the summer to engage in that practice, or you don't have to be quite as rigid until we meet again in the fall. As we come back together from our practice tonight, whether you were doing your own discernment or discerning about spiritual practice, let's center down listening together to our musical meditation, one of my favorite songs of all time by the Indigo Girls, Closer to Fine. We invite you to take Thursday nights to quiet your mind and spirit by joining us again next week for our last Vesper service of the church year. As we look ahead to the fall, we want to hear your feedback about this year of Vespers. So please take a moment after the service to fill out our quick five minute survey, which I just posted in the chat box. We would love to hear your feedback. Our closing words tonight are from black social gospeler and minister and former Dean of the chapel at my alma mater, BU School of Theology, Howard Thurman. He writes, there are two questions that a person must ask themselves. The first is where am I going? And the second is, who will go with me? We hope that whether you chose tonight to practice discernment around a question that was weighing heavy or around the spiritual practices that feed your soul, you continue to consider the role of prayer and discernment in your spiritual lives. Maybe whichever one you chose to do tonight, you will do the opposite exercise tomorrow. Maybe you will find a way to incorporate slowing down and creating space for spirit and time and your own inner wisdom to help you grapple with questions for which you are unclear about. For our postlude, we talked last social hour about a first parish flash mob dance. And for our postlude tonight, members of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Roanoke sing and dance, not quite a flash mob, but they sing and dance to when the spirit says do a civil rights song arranged by Mark Freyunda, and their rendition makes me very happy. And I hope that it'll make you happy too. You're welcome to log off at any point during or before the postlude, and we'll close the Zoom room after the postlude is finished. Have a blessed rest of your evening and amen.